Hello. We're going to talk about the Confederacy. First of all, the Civil War was definitely about slavery. Um, the whole idea that it's about states' rights is, yeah, the states' rights were involved, but the states still have rights. I remember when the national, uh, the U.S. government, the federal government, set the a national speed limit to 55. And I was in California, I was a kid, and, you know, the speed limits went to 55. Now, they don't really have the ability to set that speed limit, but what they did, if I recall correctly, this is just all from my recollection, feel free to correct me, was threaten to withhold federal funds for your interstate highways if you didn't lower the maximum speed limit. And Nevada either never did it or at least you know, I never saw them lower the speed limit, and they sort of revolted against this. You see, and they because the states are actually still independent, while you can force them with something like withholding money that maybe they desperately will need, uh, or their their roads will get bad or whatever, they had the legal freedom to go ahead and and take the consequences of their actions and legally be allowed to do that. And, you know, I don't know, a lot of states ended up going with Nevada in the end, and they raised the speed limit back. Again, at least in California. So, there is no country I know of that has as much freedom in its regional sub-entities, you know, its counties or whatever, the kind of freedom we have in the United States to have a federated legal system, um... And yeah, even down to the counties for that matter, but certainly to the state level, that still persists. The issue was whether that should include slavery, because slavery, you know, the we were, people were waiting for the final nail uh, to be hammered into the coffin on legalized kidnapping known as slavery, right? And so they saw that coming, and that's that's what they were reacting to. And they killed 300,000, roughly, northerners and sacrificed 300,000 southerners to defend the right to keep other people in bondage. And they're offended if we want to say, hey, you can't have your traitor statues anymore. But they're the same people that'll say that American, uh, African Americans should forget about slavery and stop whining about it because they're not slaves. They never knew anybody that was a slave. That's history. They should forget that. Well, maybe they'll forget it if you stop celebrating the your whole pro-slavery pro history. If you start being start start you know, evolving yourself where you can forget that past and not be racist. Maybe if you weren't racist, that would help them get over it, you think? But even if it didn't, whatever. You you have to understand that if you can remember Colonel uh, Robert E. Lee uh, pridefully, in spite of his treason, Benedict Arnold did nothing compared to Robert E. Lee, then you can understand why uh, they're still pissed off. You can go, oh, it was so wonderful, and they can go, oh, it wasn't so wonderful. Right? And, and if you can say, oh, the ramifications still exist today, then they can say the ramifications exist today. But of course, the people that do this are hypocrites, and they have no interest in even thinking that way at all. But anybody interested in the situation ought to just realize that that's the true nature of the Confederacy. They were tr traitors, and the North treated them with an amazing amount of sympathy. Now, there's examples of the carpetbaggers and everything where you could point to all kinds of things, but the penalty for treason is death. And Robert E. Lee did not get death. There was an amnesty almost immediately, uh, Robert E. Lee got amnesty, uh, but was not actually pardoned or anything. His citizen wasn't returned until like three years later. They were allowed to hold office to be the presidents of universities and in influential positions. They kept all their property. And this is not normal 
for a bunch of traders. They were treated with a gentleness, like, okay, we understand, you just lost your cool, honey. And what was the thanks for that? They've never gotten over it. They, they invented a whole lost cause theory of the Civil War where they are actually the good guys. Like, the North is still the baddies. And they still want to have their revolution. That's the story of the Confederacy. These guys, if, if anything, it's a soft on crime story. These guys probably, you know, and I'm a bleeding heart liberal. I probably would have been for that. Let's try to work past it. Don't disrupt the system anymore. And then I'm oh, disrupted or whatever. I, I wouldn't have. But I can see that, that kind of thinking. But evidently it was extended to the wrong group of people. Because they never did that. They were never contrite. They still think they should have won the Civil War. That, that they were in the right to try to defend slavery. We would have got rid of slavery in our own due time. It wasn't about that. They shouldn't have been able to hold public office. They were traitors. Anyone from Lute, any officer, and this would be like a tradition, any officer in that rebel army should have had severe consequences. Most of them should have gone to jail, and they all should have been you know, find the sum of their, you know, plantations. And maybe we wouldn't have this problem. We allowed them to keep this kind of a hope where they get to write this whole story about, no, we were really the heroes. We actually won that war somehow. Moral victory. And they're still doing it. That, that's the same energy that is just being a shit now. Like, they don't care about fairness or anything like that because people that own slaves don't care about fairness. They just they want to win by their own definition of it. And there's polls. There's a study that where like a quarter of Republicans think there have to be a violent solution to the fact that the quarter of Republicans think the election was stolen. After four years of saying Hillary was a bad loser, they're going to actually do that. They're going to, like, they're actually, it's like people project, like, I have a personality trait, and then I project it on others. No, they project that on Hillary, and then they're going to do it. They project it, and then do it. They project it before, and then do it after. I think it has to be taken seriously, and frankly, you know, just even the fact that our, our mainstream culture calls him General Robert E. Lee. He was a colonel, okay, and he had his rank stripped from him because he was a traitor, okay? So I'm not saying you have to make a big deal about military ranks and things like that, but if you do think of him as a big deal and having a lot of meaning, Robert E. Lee was a colonel who got that rank stripped from him because he was a traitor, he was never a general because he just LARPed as a general in a bunch of kidnap, pro-kidnap club revolution that cost 600,000 American lives. As much as, more than any other war. Even though we had a smaller population, more dead than, in absolute numbers than any other war. And why are we even debating or discussing this? There is no debate. It's clear what happened. People are still living in their own little LARP fantasy world where they role play their way through this fantastic narrative they've created for themselves. And you can't do anything for that just like um, all you can do for a schizophrenic is give them a safer environment. You know, you can't just like stop them from having these fantasies. Because it's out of their control at this point. But there's no credence to it. And there's no solution to be had by taking it super serious. You have to take it as a kind of mental disorder, an emotional disorder. If people are going to side with the traitors and the slave owners, I don't have a middle ground with that. 
There is no middle ground with the traders and the slave owners. Okay, because I criticize America in my political view, but I don't advocate treason. Okay, when Bush won, I didn't agree with the Supreme Court, but I was glad we had a, a, a legal system that could come into place and avoid a civil war. That's the kind of situation where a lot of less stable countries go into civil war. We're becoming that country. Right? And again, what's the reward for for celebrating civil structures when Republicans are just double doubling down on this whole like reconstructed fantasy of of history and how the world works and absolutely everything in the most hypocritical and and don't believe your lying eyes kind of way right you're dealing with people that worship treason and also want us to think they're the law and order party don't think so